I don't know what it is about mobile suits tending to their support mechas that make them look so cute. Even something as fierce as the Odysseus Gundam and the fixed flight unit, it still makes it look cute that Odysseus is tending to its gigantic robot mecha chicken. What is going on guys, MJ2005 Gundam here, and today I'm going to be reviewing the high grade Penelope for mobile suit Gundam Hathaway's Flash. Now right here I have the Odysseus Gundam just because I want to take a look at the full capabilities of the Gundam before I severely limit it with the fixed flight unit. But anyways, let's get into the review. Now the Odysseus Gundam here did share a similar design history with the XE, being that there is a completely different design in the novel, while Kotoki Hajime actually redesigned the Penelope into what we know today and the Kotoki version is the one that they adapted for the movie which I do overall prefer just because of the larger gauntlets and of course the leg braces over here for the Penelope and the overall more generic looking design it looks more like a protagonist Gundam than the Xi but of course we all know it's the inverse. Now the model kit itself over here does have pretty good amounts of detail for example in the chest which unfortunately is going to be hidden if you put on the fixed flight unit and the detail on these gauntlets over here do look absolutely freaking phenomenal because I do like the hexagonal theme that are going on here and of course we do have some patches at the ends of the gauntlets over here. Now the Baxter is the thing that I don't really like too much about the Odysseus Gundam just because these are clearly made for the Penelope design and the Baxter's feel like an afterthought when looking at the Odysseus Gundam and it's just left on there just because they have, there's nowhere to put it onto the fixed flight unit. But overall the design does look pretty good. Color scheme wise it does look a little bit plain especially towards the lower body just because it doesn't have any other colors to accent the majority of the white other than the gray and the yellow. So many people have been iffy about the lack of colors on the lower body but personally to me it does give the Gundam a more unique taste just because it shows that it doesn't need to necessarily be colorful everywhere in order to make this Gundam look good. Proportionally, this thing does also look very very accurate and it doesn't look absolutely ridiculous like the one in Araxi Boost On or any of the Extreme Gundam Versus titles for that matter. So overall, the Odysseus Gundam does look pretty good. Stickers are minimal as well but of course it's not fair when comparing it to the C because that thing has an integrated flight unit. So anyways, here we go. We do have the eyes the sensors and the gray on the shoulder thrusters that is basically it so color separation on this thing not that there is much is actually pretty good so overall the Odysseus Gundam does get a seal of approval from me in terms of the looks articulation wise this guy is no slouch either so first of all you do have a double ball joint that is not a potty cap so funky chicken is possible rotation is possible I will show you the updated articulation when the fixed flight unit is on but as of now it's completely unencumbered now the shoulders over here they can't do much because they do have kind of like a core Gundam extension mechanic for the fixed flight unit so all they can do is rotate all the way around they can go out a little bit far but due to the gauntlets it is kind of limited but if you rotate the forearms and then raise it up it will go out pretty far of course evidently showing that the shoulder flap over here can move the arms can rotate above the elbow it's not loose not as loose as the Kasi on them but still requires fixing if it decides to wear off a bend at the elbow at two joints which is very very nice and as I did show, the forearms can rotate and the wrists are on very tight ball joints. So you don't need to worry about the wrists falling off. Now for the waist over here, it's on the gigantic ball joint. So you can do a little bit of crunching, a little bit of rotation, but it's still relatively impeded in the Odysseus Gundam form due to the armor. On top of that, the upper torso over there does seem to have a little bit of crunching capability so that's a little bit more to add to the articulation front skirts can be separated with no ill effects side skirts can move up no problem the back skirts can move for once but they're on these solid ball joints over here so you cannot adjust it beyond what the ball joint allows you to do now the legs over here can go forwards and back separate from the waist you do also have the funky dance mechanic but it is a little bit hard to get it to move the legs can also go forwards go backwards almost all the way go outwards as far as the ball joint will allow it because these are still using ball joints and legs however considering the legs are using ball joints and legs this is still pretty far rotation at the hip and a double jointed knee which looks very very nice 
Now these spurs over here can move up and down and the feet they can go forwards and back side to side rotate and the token point down for the Penelope's flight mode and there is no backpack so overall the articulation on the Odysseus Gundam is absolutely phenomenal but prepare to say goodbye to it when you equip the gigantic chicken. Accessories of the Odysseus Gundam is relatively simplistic because there is only one handheld accessory while the others are on the body. So over here in the gauntlets we do have the beam saber tips over here and this kit does come with SP-13 beams in the very pale pink. I just apparently never paid attention in the unboxing. So yeah, the Penelope vs C set does come with beams for the Penelope. But on top of that, you do also have the beam cannon that you can flip out on a double hinge and you can blast some people with the gauntlets. Finally, you do get the beam rifle over here, which is very nicely color separated, but unfortunately the top needs to be colored here in white. And the cartridge is not separate from the beam rifle, but that I can understand. You do also have a metallic red sticker for the scope and of course a plain red sticker over here for the detail. So overall, the beam rifle does look pretty nice. There's a decent amount of hexagonal details for you to panel line in and you can allow the gun to hold it with the trigger finger hand over here. But the one thing that I feel weird about is that it doesn't have a hole in the rifle while it does have a peg in the palm. But what that is for is to fixate the handles between the fingers and the palm so that it does have a secure grip but it does come out of position relatively easily when compared to the rifles that has the hole in the handle. Now these beam cannons are a little bit hard to flip in just because if they do go out of position you will find that the joint is a little bit hard to move so I'm not going to move it now move it off screen and here we have it the Odysseus Gundam is holding the beam rifle and on top of that apart from the closed fists and the trigger finger hand you do also get a pair of open hands which is very nice of Bandai. So that's going to wrap it up for the accessories of the Odysseus Gundam. So for comparisons, of course I have to bring in the original Gundam just to give you guys a perspective of how large the Odysseus Gundam already is. So that is pretty large. Moving on, let's bring in the Kasi Gundam. And I don't know if it's my eyes tricking me or not, but I feel like on to the top of the head, the Odysseus Gundam is a hair taller than the Kasi. Finally, let's bring in a Master Grade to compare this guy with. The Master Grade Gundam Barbatos. So they are relatively the same height for a 1 to 144 scale. Because the reactors are too large to fit into a small Gundam like that. Moving on to the fixed flight unit and this is where Bandai has mucked up when it comes to the twin set because despite this kit coming with the arm for the Penelope stand it doesn't come with the base that is included in the vanilla kit moreover if you try to equip it with the adapter for the Gundams to prop it up with the action bases that the set comes with it doesn't work sure you can modify the adapter to try and make it fit the fixed flight unit but I don't know how much it would affect the support when you try to prop up the Gundams so I will advise against it so ultimately, this is still an oversight on Bandai's part. But anyways, let's get into the unit itself. The fixed flight unit does look pretty good in and of itself. It does have pretty good amounts of detail because this is exterior armor for the Odysseus Gundam. So of course, it has to have more detail. Color separation is also pretty good with the small details like the shoulder fins over here and of course the smaller pieces on the chicken head. However, it still relies on some stickers to bring out these smaller details. Let's say the stickers underneath the clear pieces, the red wings over here, the red wing piece on the back over here and the gray that is underneath the tip of the long wing over here. So yeah, it still relies on some sticker to bring out the color detail, but overall the separation is pretty good. It does also use two braces to keep all of the units together in order to create the fixed flight unit. So you will have some braces left over if you dock the fixed flight unit onto the Penelope. So this thing right here overall, it feels okay to handle, but it doesn't feel like the best thing to mess around with if you don't have a way to prop it up. So yeah, this is just a gigantic mecha chicken that takes up more space than when you equip it with the Odysseus Gundam because the long tail over here is basically extended towards the back. So it's basically the same case of the so it's basically the same case as the full armor unicorn Gundam's fuel tanks. You poke it takes up like two to three mobile suits worth of space towards the back. But anyways, that is basically going to be it for the fixed flight unit. So 
I will disassemble this thing and teach you how to equip it onto the Odysseus Gundam. With everything taken off, you're left with this gigantic brace over here. You can put it off to the side and leave it be. Now, starting off with the feet. The feet armor is pretty self-explanatory. You just plug it into the holes on the heel and toes. But for the toes, you poke the toe in before you plug it in just to encapsulate the entire tip of the toe. Same thing goes for the other side. And then you drop the spurs. And then you would like to take the back pieces of the legs and just plug them into the back. Keep in mind that the lower hexagon has to have the detail facing outwards. Same thing goes for the other side. And then you would finally like to take the side pieces and plug them onto the sides like so. I feel like the pegs have more to give but because of the armor it's getting in the way so these pieces tend to fall off the easiest when it comes to the lower body. But they don't fall off that easily so you do not need to worry about that. Sorry for the jump cut but I did forget something during the combination which is to switch out the central leg piece for the one that is extended just to give the Penelope a wider stance and an easier time handling all of the armor pieces. Don't worry, that change has already been made during the Penelope section of the review. So I apologize, but anyways, back to the main video. And then you just flip down the opening hatch over here. It's pretty narrow, so you may need some mechanical help. And here you have it. And then you bring in the waist armor, drop the front skirts, and you plug the extended piece into the bottom hole and then plug the top peg into this hole right here. So it should be soundly plugged in there. However, it's not secure until you plug on the top piece. Next, you would like to extend the shoulders similarly to the core Gundam and then give it a pretty snazzy mohawk haircut. And then you would like to bring in the front piece over here and flip the beam cannons back and plug the pegs over here into the holes in the shoulders while at the same time plugging these pegs into the grooves in the armor so as to fixate everything in the Gundam. Now beware of the V fins while you do so and this is definitely going to get a little bit finicky just because there are so many moving pieces that need to work together in order to secure the chest piece into the shoulders so I will be right back when I have that done here you have it it's the most troublesome aspect of this combination so congratulations if you got that done finally you would want to bring in the bird head and then push in the rear tail over here and then you would want to retract the bird head it's on a double hinge and then you're supposed to lift up the bird head over here it's a little bit flimsy down there so it tends to go back to its former position at the same time you want to bring in this unit over here and slide it in now this is also pretty loose in there so yeah keep that in mind i think this is the sub arm unit for the cartridge switch but i'm not really too sure but what you need to do now is to open up the back skirts and plug the entire thing in and also beware of the v fins yet again until you firmly secure the thing close the baskets around the sub arms and bring back his old haircut and then you will be done this here is the penelope in all of its glory and i have to say wow just wow this thing is definitely going to turn some eyes whenever they see this thing on the shelf because it's just so large and it's just so out there. Of course, when compared to the XC, they're really similar looking apart from the Odysseus Gundam being a little bit claustrophobic in there. But this is still a pretty good statement piece to behold. And with the metallic red sensor stickers on the chest being exposed in this form, it just makes this kit that much more menacing. Of course, there are some moving pieces when it comes to the fixed flight unit, like the tail over here this, this thing can go up and down the tail fin over here can go up and down as well and you do also have these shoulder pieces that you need to shift around 
when transforming this thing into the flight form, but there are quite a bit of redundant joints in my opinion because you don't need to rotate them side to side when it does have that joint but it's nice to have a few joints of course you can also shift the chicken head but not now you do not do that in the mobile suit mode and of course you do have the cannons up here that are on ball joints and hinges and to top it all off you can plug in the sb13 beams that came in this kit to simulate it firing which is very very nice and finally you can shift these pieces up a little bit to simulate the funnel missile hatches being opened up and ready to fire. So all in all, the Penelope does come with a few extra gimmicks when it comes to features. However, the articulation is going to be severely hindered just because of the armor. The head can obviously go nowhere now apart from a little bit of side to side, but you still need to be wary of the Vivians breaking because of all the parts that are around it. The arms are obviously severely hindered unless you shift the fixed flight unit shoulder pieces out all you can do is point the beam cannons forward you can't even nimbly slash the beam sabers down which i don't know how it does it in the extreme versus titles the front skirts over here can also move and fun fact you do also get some funnel missiles underneath it but they're just detailing so the legs can still give a little bit of a kick and you can still utilize the joints but you can only bend it 90 degrees due to the armor now so the articulation is severely hindered but this is just the statement piece that you need to look at there are two more things to cover with the penelope though first of all you do have the side pieces over here that you can switch out for vents so if you want some gray accents on the chest piece of the fixed flight unit here you have it but personally i do prefer the covers just because it does make the detail more complete on the chest pieces finally we do have the flight form that is made exclusively for the movie so first of all you would want to give it the mohawk haircut again and then completely collapse the top piece and the chicken head Next on the menu, you would want to flip the pieces over here up, flip the rear one completely up and the front one slightly up. And I should have closed the funnel missile panel over here, but I didn't because I'm an idiot. And then you would like to flip the front, both front skirts up, flip the beam cannons down and flip the toes down just like so and then you basically point every appendage towards the back while you plug the thigh armor into what is supposedly the sub arm unit now it's a little bit hard to show so i'm gonna zoom in you just plug that in and then plug the other leg in and adjust the feet oh yeah and finally extend the tail which is going to make this thing extremely space inefficient. And here we have the flight mode in all of its glory. And I really don't know what to think about this. Just because, yes, it may provide speeds up to Mach 2, like the Xi Gundam. But it's basically the Penelope, or maybe the Odysseus Gundam, being enveloped completely by the fixed flight unit. It is extremely space inefficient, which is one of the major frustrations that I have with this mode. And of course, achieving it is a little bit hard just because you have so many pieces to move around. And of course, you need to plug the thighs into the sub arms on the back. It's a lot to take into account. And this thing doesn't really look too different when compared to the vanilla Penelope mode. But of course, because of the giant tail poking out towards the back, yeah, account for the space needed for it yourself. In terms of comparisons, my set is way too small to accommodate the Penelope in full shot with anything else. So I had to turn to photos and here is a photo of the Penelope with the generic Gundam. And as you can see, it just eats the original Gundam up. Next on the list, we do have that with a Master Grade, so the Master Grade Gundam Barbatos. And then finally, we have the Xi, Penelope, and Kshatriya lined up side by side. So that is going to wrap it up for the High Grey Penelope review. I'm going to separate my verdict into two parts. First of all, the Odysseus Gundam. It does have very nice looking proportions and very well done color separation, only using stickers for the eyes, sensors, and the shoulder thrusters. And the structure is very sound as well, so you can go to town with the poses, 
with the plentiful amounts of articulation implemented into the kit. But the color scheme is not really to everybody's cup of tea and I wish they would have adapted the color scheme that is from the G Generations design because it does have more colors towards the lower body instead of just a plain white. Moving on to the fixed flight unit, the color separation is also very well done on the unit itself, only using stickers for the tips of the wings, some thrusters that are underneath the tail, and the details underneath the clear pieces. It is very hard to handle and very hard to store just because of its space inefficiency due to the tail and of course the clutter that is on the unit itself. Docking it with the Odysseus gun into 4 into Penelope is also pretty tedious as you need to line up a ton of stuff in order for the docking to happen, but the Penelope itself is a very very nice statement piece for you and your guests to look at just because it is so large and imposing, albeit with the Odysseus gun feeling claustrophobic in there. And the articulation is severely limited, sure, but you can also pull off quite a bit of poses with the features of the fixed flight unit. And of course you can transform it into the flight form, which I'm not really too big of a fan of, but the mechanic is very well implemented as well, so that's a pretty decent option to go for when you're finding an option to display this thing in. Overall, I'm going to give this thing an 8 out of 10. If it is still out there as a standalone purchase, I will absolutely recommend you guys to go ahead and pick it up. But if you're purchasing it for the twin set, it's only worth it for the Penelope form because you do not have the vanilla stand that it comes with the standard kit. So you cannot prop up the fixed flight unit to display alongside the Odysseus Gundam, unfortunately. So that's going to wrap it up for me. 8 out of 10. Absolutely recommend it. Thank you all so much for watching this video. If you did like it, please be sure to drop a like, comment, and also subscribe for more. Gunplay reviews, gunplay news, and all that kind of stuff. Turn on notifications for future content alerts if you haven't, and I'll see you all in the next video. Peace.